Hello, this is Daryl Castle with today's podcast. Today is Friday, August 22nd, 2014. And on today's podcast, we're going to discuss the persecution of Christians around the world, primarily by Islamic jihadists calling themselves the Islamic State, but by other jihadist groups as well. The stories coming out of Iraq haven't gained much traction in the Western press which tends to group Muslims in general with the jihadists and put them all in the religion of peace category. But when a group of people flood across a country, crucifying and beheading people, raping children, boys and girls, murdering men, taking women into sex slavery, raiding villages, and herding women and children into churches, burning them alive, then I would say that group of people doesn't represent any religion of peace. All these things have happened in Iraq, according to multiple news sources, according to UN reports, and according to eyewitness testimony widely reported. Most recently, they publicly beheaded American journalist James Foley. The killing of James Foley caused even President Obama to say the Islamic State should be stopped. He usually remains fairly quiet about the killing of Christians. But he came out and made his brief announcement in his usual monotone, detached voice, then immediately hurried off to play another round of golf. This group, the Islamic State, posted a video with a U.S. flag splattered with blood next to the jihadist flag with the message, quote, we will drown all of you in blood. This group of psychopaths needs to be taken seriously. It reminds me a little of the story in the Bible where Goliath would come out in front of the Israelites cursing and screaming at them, trying to sound frightening. Women and children, though, are easy victims for such people. So right now, who is right about the nature of Islam? The Western leaders or the Islamic State? Does the Islamic State know more about Islam than the New York Times? I'll bet it does. Militant Islam hasn't really changed much over the years. In fact, one could argue that the Islamic State is more honest because it has given us a truer picture of what Islam really is. The religion of peace Muslims, then, would be called apostates and lackeys for the West. The real jihadists seem to be possessed with the idea that they can threaten, murder, torture, mutilate, and rape other people of other faiths into publicly accepting their particular brand of psychosis. The Islamic State is not the only group, of course. Al-Qaeda and its various subgroups is still active around the world, especially across Africa, Boko Haram, still raiding villages, mostly in Nigeria, where its usual M.O. is to slaughter the men, behead the children, take the young girls as sex slaves, Heard any survivors into their village church, which is usually some Western Christian group is built for them, and then burned the church with them in it. This scene is played out time and again across Africa. The extreme poverty and despair of most of that continent makes African youth fertile recruiting ground for Boko Haram, Al-Qaeda, as well as the Islamic State. As I said earlier, President Obama expressed outrage at the beheading of journalist James Foley. It came to light after Mr. Foley's death that a rescue was attempted, but the hostages were not in the targeted location. It would be very interesting indeed to interview some of the soldiers who conducted the failed raid. Mr. Obama took an active part in arming rebels to fight against Bashar Assad in Syria. We know that some of the weapons went to the group that later became the Islamic State. Now we must turn to Assad, because if he is defeated in Syria, the country will most likely become part of the Islamic Caliphate. That is an interesting irony, but so is joining forces with Iran, as it sends fighters and weapons into Iraq. Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Martin Dempsey, said that we cannot defeat the Islamic State unless we engage them in Syria. Well, how convenient is that? Back to Syria again. Many others, including Rick Perry, governor of Texas, 
have suggested that ground troops should be sent back into Iraq. President Obama's response to Islamic attacks against Christians and its threats to Americans has been rather detached and reluctant. He must understand, however, that forces of genocide and terror have been unleashed across the world by a toppled leader here, an invasion there, an Arab Spring thrown in for good measure. And these forces are gaining strength across the world. They will not stop until they are confronted by a civilized world. Finally, this is all approved by Sharia law, the evil exploitation and rape of children, the enslavement of women, exists across the world as does barbaric terroristic torture and murder. But only in Islam is it approved and ordained by the divine. At least that's the way I see it, folks. Until next time, this is Daryl Castle. Thanks for listening.